So with Russia now reduced to targeting cities and people in them, what does that say about the state of the war for what Nick Ben Walsh just called a weakened Goliath? Joining us, CNN military analyst, retired Army Lieutenant General Mark Hurtling, also retired Army Brigadier General Peter Zwack. He served as defense attache to Russia during the Russian invasion of Ukraine and annexation of Crimea in 2014. Uh, General Hurtling, even a weakened Goliath can cause a lot of chaos and d destruction. Do you have any idea um, how long Russia could continue to carry out attacks on today's scale? I think we have to point out, Anderson, that this is not a change in, in tactics by Russia. They've been doing these kinds of things since the very beginning. In terms of answering your question, how long can they do it? They obviously attempted to do a equivalent of a shock and awe day yesterday. Uh, and even with the 84, by, by Ukrainian count, 84 missiles, 24 drones, half of both numbers were shot down by Ukrainian forces as they flew overhead. So yes, there was a lot of damage done to civilian infrastructure. But again, Mr. Putin is a one-trick pony. He has been attacking civilian infrastructure with rockets and missiles since the beginning of this campaign. None of that has contributed to him achieving any of his political or military end state goals. So yeah, you know, I, I got to believe that sanctions are, are uh, hurting him, that his weapon systems are faltering. There's, remember way back long ago, we were finding out that about 60% of Russians' missiles were failing during launch. So a combination of fewer with more failures, with the same strikes against civilian targets, which are criminal, uh, I don't know, I, I don't believe he can keep this up much longer. General Zwack, what does it say if, if Nick is right and this attack, these strikes, uh, were largely for a domestic Russian audience? What does that say about what lies ahead? The, these attacks, um, as uh, General Hurtling had mentioned, is really a follow-on of, of behaviors going all the way back to the first evening of 24 February. Um, they're, gonna, they're amping it up. I sense, I feel frustration in these strikes. They, they, the Russians have not been able to beat the plucky um, um, nimble and capable Ukrainian military in the field. So, so, uh, and, and then, uh, and then the the bridge, the Kerch Bridge was dropped uh, uh, several days ago. And and I, I just think that this is sort of a manifestation of uh, of uh, frustration, rage, power, um, um, and I think it's all it's going to do. It's going to uh, harden the Ukrainians even more that went through incredibly anxious days in February and March. And, and this just continues the negative narrative. Uh, he'll, he may get some uh, points for being strong and tough, but this isn't long-term going to play well in Russia. And also, it really enhances, continues this sort of black hat aspect of the Russians in the international community in the United Nations. And, and Joe Hurtling, just in terms of the, the months ahead, what does the war continue to look like? Well, we're going to see some changes in the environment, certainly, uh, Anderson, but that affects both sides. And I'm talking about weather. Uh, Ukraine continues to generate momentum. There's an attempt by Russia to incorporate mobilized soldiers, which we've seen through internal Russian reports. There are more people running out of country than there are uh, moving and marching to mobilization stations. And even if they get some of those to, uh, Russian soldiers to the front line, they're going to be joining units that are actually uh, depleted, low morale, and have not achieved any success on the battlefield. So we're going to see an increased momentum by the Ukrainian forces. You're going to see more defeats on the battlefield by the Russian forces. And unfortunately, we're probably going to see more since we have since the 24th of February, as Peter said, more artillery and missile strikes against civilian targets and more criminal activities that puts Russia and Mr. Putin uh, in, in, in an aspect that they should be brought before the Hague. General Hurtling, General Zwack, I appreciate it. Thank you.